What's up, everybody? Jeff Moores here, one of the pastors at the Vista Campus, bringing you today's Daily Dose. And I'm about to show you one verse, just one verse out of the fifth chapter of the book of James and how that verse can help set you completely free. Let's check it out. James chapter 5, verse 16. And it reads this. It says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other, and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Now, James is talking right here. He's kind of gone through a whole deal in this, these last few verses in chapter five, where he's talking about being healed and being set free and being released from the things that ail us, whether physically or spiritually. And when he says here, he says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that you may be healed. He's actually getting incredibly specific. First, he's saying this, confess your sins to one another, which not just anybody, but he's saying confess your sins to somebody else who's a part of the body of Christ, who's a mature believer, that they understand grace, they understand forgiveness, they understand righteousness, so that they are going to be able to take what it is that you're telling them, and they're mature enough to handle it. But secondly, is it's, it's more kind of in the Greek, and so you don't really see it here in the new NIV, but he's saying get very specific about naming your sin. When he says confess, it actually means to name the thing that you're dealing with. And this is where things can get awkward, things can get uncomfortable. But if we never talk about what it is specifically that we're dealing with, then we can never be specifically healed from it. I mean, think about it this way. When you go into the doctor and you're sitting in the doctor's office or in the, wait, in the waiting room, in the doctor's room or whatever, you're on the bed, the doctor's there, we'll call it good. And the doctor says, hey, uh, what's, what's going on with you? And you just go, I, I, don't, I don't feel very good. And the doctor goes, okay, well, can you, can you be more specific about it? And, and you go, no, I just, I don't really feel comfortable talking to you about what's, you know, what's going on. So can you just try to fix whatever's happening with me? No, he can't fix you. I mean, he can prescribe all sorts of stuff, but that isn't necessarily going to help you. But it's when you get specific and you go and you say, look, you're the doctor, you're the person, A, I need to be going to because you get it, you understand it. Now, here's what I'm dealing with. I've got massive amounts of pain on my right lower abdomen and I'm, these are my symptoms, this is what's going on. And the doctor can go, oh, that sounds like appendicitis. We're gonna get you into surgery. It's gonna hurt, it's gonna be painful. But at the very end of all this process, you're gonna be free and you're gonna be healed. See, we need to start getting a little bit more specific with our sin. I think too often we're way too general when it comes to our sin. We just go, yeah, I've been struggling with some stuff. Well, like what stuff? Well, you know, just, just some, some issues. No, start to get very specific because then not only can you begin to get the help that you need, but you can start to pray more specifically, which is really the second thing that I wanna hit right here is it says that the prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. See, we have to understand that the issues that we deal with, the sin that we deal with, aren't always just fixed by different rituals and, 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 and different actions and right actions. No, what we deal with is spiritual. And so we have to come at it with spiritual warfare, with spiritual tools, thus prayer. And not just prayer in general, but specific prayer from specific people, people that are righteous. But not just, again, now righteousness doesn't mean that they just do the right things all the time. No, righteousness, when you fully understand it, is that you know that your righteousness personally is worthless, but you've had a righteousness given you by Jesus Christ. And so a righteous person understands that their power, that their ability to pray, that their ability to see things happen, and their ability to live rightly isn't because of themselves, but it's because of the power that Jesus has given us. And so when you're dealing with sin, you want to confess it, you want to get as specific as you can, but you want to do so to somebody who's mature, but somebody who understands the powerfulness of Jesus, the powerfulness of of grace. I don't even know if powerfulness is a word, but I made it up, so you're welcome. Go ahead and use it all day long. So if you're dealing with a sin, take James chapter 5, verse 16, find somebody who's mature, who can deal with it, confess and pray, and start to see freedom. See you later.